Welcome back to Queen City Corals. Today we're going to be feeding our 3,000 plus corals and showing you guys how you can feed your corals at home and how we do it here. So we have four main types of foods that we use to feed our corals here. The first is going to be liquid foods such as amino acids like the Red Sea Reef Energy and then there's also phytoplankton and oyster feast is the primary one we use here but there are several different types of liquid foods. These are really good for getting everything to open up and broadcast feeding. So what we're going to do today and what we normally do is we add this into the aquarium. We usually put it in a high flow area like into a uh, power head or the return pump and that spreads throughout the aquarium and after about 15 to 20 minutes we'll come back through with our next type of food and that's going to be our powdered foods. These are typically Reefroids and Benepets. These both are used here in the store. It really just depends on what the nutrient levels are in the aquarium. So with Reefroids, these are a very nutrient dense food and they'll increase things like nitrates and phosphates. So you want to watch how much you add, especially if you already have higher nutrients. Benepets, on the other hand, will actually lower your phosphates and won't really affect your nitrates. So I'll use this on a system that has higher nutrients, but I still want to get extra nutrition for the corals. And then our next type of food is going to be pellet food. I like to use this Benepets LPS mix. Again, it'll decrease phosphates and also not really affect your nitrates. So if you have lower nutrients, you might want to avoid foods like this and the powdered form of Benepets and stick with Reefroids. But I really like this for bigger meteor corals like scolies and acanthophilias because they have larger mouths and really like to eat these chunkier pellets and they work really well for them. The final type of food is the most common that we use and you probably use at home and that's going to be frozen food. So this can be anything such as mysis shrimp or a pre-packaged mixed food like LRS, Reef Frenzy um, or Rod's food, any of those type of foods, they're going to be similar feeding to the pellets where you want to feed it to larger corals that are going to be able to catch it. You can't really feed it to smaller polyp things such as zoanthids or SPS corals because they don't have mouths large enough to digest them. Um, so they'll usually just end up spitting them out. So typically we'll just feed larger things like meat corals and scolies similar to the pellets. Okay, so we're getting ready to mix up our food. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this plastic container to mix all of our food together and then we'll go through with this small syringe and we'll take it out of the container and put it on top of the corals and I'll show you guys that in a moment after we've mixed everything up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our Reefroids and so because I'm feeding a lot of corals I'm doing a lot but typically I recommend starting out with a very small amount as it can increase your nutrients quite a bit and test your water afterwards to make sure it doesn't affect your water chemistry too much. Now after I feed the Reefroids, I'm going to add in some of our Benepets food on top. These foods do have different vitamins and nutrients in them. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of Oyster Feast into the mix as well as some Reef Energy. And lastly, I'm going to add a little bit of phytoplankton. This is live phytoplankton and it will actually help lower your nutrients. Um, I've found that after I dose live phyto, our nutrients will go down a little bit. Um, so that's a good food also to add in cooperation with the Benepets if you have a little bit of a higher nutrient system and you don't want them getting out of hand. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add a little bit of tank water. Got our tank water in there. This just helps to dilute it, and so that way we have enough food to feed all the different corals. Because um, we're feeding a lot of corals today, we're feeding all of our systems um, to make sure that all of our corals are getting the necessary nutrients to help them grow and color up. And so we'll go through and mix this all up into a nice slurry mixture here. And the next thing we're going to do now that we have our food mixed is we're going to go ahead and dose a little bit of reef energy as well as a little bit of phytoplankton across the different tanks. That way everything gets nice and open before we're ready to feed them. 
and they're going to catch the food a lot easier that way because they'll have all their feeder tentacles out. So we're here at our 80 gallon display and this is the first tank I'm going to broadcast feed. So I've got a power head as well as the return here. So I'm going to add a little bit of reef energy here, about 15 mils. And it will turn the tank yellow, that's completely normal. Um, those are just all the amino acids. If you'd like, you can also turn off your return pump and that'll make sure that none of it goes into the filtration um, and it just keeps swirling around the tank. But for us, these return nozzles add a lot of flow, so it's a little bit more beneficial to keep it all moving in throughout the tank, even if we lose a little bit down the drain. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of phytoplankton. I'm gonna add about 20 mils of that. And you can see it darkens up the tank for a moment but the corals are definitely gonna love that. And it's also gonna help a little bit with the um, nutrients in this system. It will dissipate pretty quick, so don't worry too much about clouding up the aquarium. The corals will eat it, as well as um, any of the pods and other small life that you have in the aquarium. And eventually it'll get filtered out anyways by your filter socks and your skimmer. Um, so don't worry too much about any clouding effects that may occur. start off feeding our zoas. These guys are nice and open and ready to eat. And so I'm going to, I've filled up the syringe with our food mixture and we're just going to give it a little shake just to make sure it's all mixed up. And what we're going to do is we aren't going to blast them with the food. We're going to basically just gently lay it on top. So you don't want to force them to close up by blowing it too hard. So what I'm doing is basically just letting it fall on top of the polyp. This can be a little tough if you have invertebrates and fish that are hungry like shrimp, um, but as long as you feed those guys first, and you can also even give them a little bit of this coral food, um, they usually won't bother it too much. And as you can see, they'll start to close up as they catch the food, but you don't wanna blast them with the food and get them to prematurely close up before they've actually caught enough. So we'll just go through and feed all of our zoa colonies here. Make sure they're nice and happy. And this really helps to get them to color up as well as grow. And of course I've turned off all the flow in this tank to make it nice and easy to feed them. Otherwise the food will just end up flying all over the place. Um, and it'll make it a little tougher for them to catch it. Especially stuff like zoas where they don't really have feeder tentacles that can actually grab on the food as well. They really just need to close their mouths around it. And because they're a little bit slower, um, they just need a little bit of help to make sure that the food doesn't fly away from them and they're able to grab it. So with a tank like this, it's a little tough to feed everything, um, but the corals are connected and so they'll share a digestive system. So you actually don't need to feed every single polyp on a colony. As long as the colony is connected, you can just feed a few of the polyps and they'll actually share the food between each other because they have a connective digestive tract. Typically with feeding, I won't feed some of our more aggressive growing corals such as pallies just because I don't want them growing too fast and I find that if I feed them, they'll end up outgrowing um, their tiles and they'll start growing onto the racks and things like that. So if you have weedier corals like Xenia or Palithoas, it can be best to not feed them and just let them grow naturally so that way they don't outcompete some of the other corals in your tank and make sure that everything grows nice and evenly. So as you can see, all of our corals are nice and closed up, which is exactly what we want. They're all nice and happy and eating. They'll normally take between 30 minutes to an hour to digest all this food. Um, and after that time, they'll open back up, usually bigger than they were before because they're all happy and fed and full. So this is definitely my favorite tank to feed. This has all of our scolies and our meat corals and our trachies. 
These guys have the best feeding response, I think. So you can see this guy is nice and open. These are all his feeder tentacles, which means he is ready to eat. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all this food all along his mouth. And you can see his feeder tentacles will start to retract as they grab that food. And the feeder tentacles are sticky, so they have those stinging cells in them and they'll actually grab onto the food. So you can see it start to close up. And as it does, it catches that food and it'll bring it into its mouth. And just like the zoas, it'll close up for a little while and then open back up once it's um, nice and happy and full and eating all that food. This guy doesn't have his feeder tentacles out right now. He's an endophilia. But if we put a little bit of food on top of him, those feeder tentacles will come out in a moment. And then we'll be able to put a little bit more food onto him. He'll be nice and hungry and ready to eat. This is the main reason I love feeding this tank so much. Um, these meat corals, like this acanthophilia, they have these really awesome feeder tentacles that come out. They're super sticky, so you can see they'll catch on the food really well. And so we'll just put it all along here. And these guys you can also feed mice, um, as well as the pellets and the frozen foods, because um, they'll catch it really well with these feeder tentacles. But the reaction that they have to the food is really awesome. So these trachees and meats also really like this pellet food. And so what I'm gonna do is the same sort of thing where I'm just gonna place it there on his mouth and he'll slowly catch all these bits, close up around them and eat them. And as you can see, these pellets are starting to dissolve already just from being in the water. And the reason for that is because the digestive systems on the corals aren't very advanced. So it's a little tough for them to digest harder materials. So it's really good to have something like this. So just like the meat corals, these guys have a really unique feeding response where they have all their tentacles open like this. This is how you really know they're nice and hungry and ready to eat. So I'm going to just lightly dust each of these polyps with a little bit of food. And you can watch as they'll slowly contract around there. That food, they'll close up their mouths and they'll eat as much as they can. And then if there's any food left over that they didn't eat, they'll end up pooping it out. Um, and you can see that later. Um, after you feed your corals, there will just be some slime that can possibly come out. Um, it's pretty common and nothing to worry about. That's just them getting rid of anything they didn't want to eat. So now we're going to feed some of our euphilia. This is our hammer tank. And we're just going to, similar to the way we did the other corals, just lightly place our food mixture on top. The tentacles will usually catch it pretty well. As you can see there, they're kind of closing up around the food. Uh, so it's not too hard, but you just want to try to make sure you get a good amount in there because some of it will float off, as you can see. So as long as we get a pretty good amount in there, they're usually able to catch and eat it. And we'll just go through and get all the different corals and hammers in here. And some of them are gonna have two heads, and I'll usually just try to feed both heads. Again, they're gonna be connected through tissue, typically, so you only need to feed one head, but it definitely doesn't hurt to feed multiple heads. And you just wanna make sure you're very gentle when you're placing um, your syringe on here, because you can break off tentacles. Um, and while it won't really hurt the coral too much, the tentacles can float around and sting other corals in your tank. So you don't want to break any of the tentacles off and get them floating around. And now that we've got our flow off in our torch tank, we'll go ahead and feed it. And very similar to the hammers, we're just gonna lightly place some of the food into their tentacles and see as they catch it and bring it down in towards their mouth. I'm just gonna go through and target feed all the corals here. Okay, so this is our Ghani frag tank, so we'll do similar to the torches, go through and feed all of them, making sure not to disturb their tentacles too much. With these guys, they're actually even more connected than the euphilia, so you really only need to get a couple of mouths. And as long as a few of them are eating, the whole coral will eat uh, because they have a connected digestive tract. You can see not all of them will close up right away. That's normal. Um, sometimes they're catching it in their tentacles and they're just going to wait to close them up. 
until they're sure they have all the food. And sometimes they just aren't really hungry and they won't really eat. Um, but either way, it's normal for them to not always close up, but typically they will. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and seeing us feed all of our different corals in the shop. Uh, if you guys like the video, make sure to leave a like below and subscribe so you get updated whenever we drop a new video. If you have any questions about feeding your corals at home or about any of the corals here in the shop, you can leave a comment down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.